floor is yours. Thank you, Patricia. And good morning, and good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. It's wonderful to be with you all today at this webinar, which is a collaboration of the Communicators for Women Religious and the International Union of Superiors General. I'm Sister Maxine Kolash, uh, an IHM sister from Monroe, Michigan, and co-founder of A Nun's Life Ministry, and a recent former board member of CWR. Uh, today with me, uh, you have, you have uh, just met her as well, is my co-facilitator, Patrizia Morgante. Patrizia? Sorry, I'm trying to let other people in. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> and we begin our time together with a prayer of thanksgiving for this opportunity to be with one another as we learn and grow professionally, helping to advance God's mission in our world. May all that is spoken today be our song of gratitude to God. Amen. And uh, Patricia, uh, do you have some guidelines uh, for, for today? No, I think we, I gave all the, the information just after, okay. you know, so no problem. Thank you. Just wanted to check in on that. Um, we'll begin uh, talking with our panelists and later we'll have time for Q and A. And you can also comment and ask questions as we go along in the chat room and in the Q and A. And as folks have mentioned, we are recording this webinar and you can be able to, <clears throat> to watch it the second time around. And now I'd like to welcome our panelists. Molly Mullen is communi Hi Molly, Communications Director for the Notre Dame Sisters in Omaha, Nebraska. Rob Cogswell is the Director of Communications for the Sisters of St. Joseph of Orange in California. <clears throat> and Sister Hema Mourinho is Communication Officer for the Compania de Santa Teresa de Jesus in Rome, Italy. So we're delighted that you could be here today. We look forward to hearing from you. And a quick note, after each panelist, we'll take just a few moments to pause so that you can jot down your thoughts, ideas, comments, and questions. So Molly, I invite you to begin. Good morning from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, my name is Molly and I'm the communications director here at the Notre Dame Sisters. I have a small team that I work with. I have a full-time advancement director. I have a part-time database specialist who helps us keep all of our lists in order. And I have a part-time prayer coordinator who helps us pray for um, our prayer association and send out cards of prayer for anniversaries uh, and things like that. For the past two years, we have been raising money um, above and beyond what our goal is for the Notre Dame Sisters and our three main ministries, which are housing for seniors, housing for formerly homeless women, and uh, the Coalition on Human Trafficking. And we've been able to exceed our goals mostly because of all of our great prior planning that we put into all of our efforts. 
And I'm going to show you today a few tools that I use to make sure that we meet all of our deadlines and exceed our goals when it's just one person doing about four different nonprofits. So first I start with my strategy, which I will show you in a minute. Um, we have a social media strategy, which includes Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We, our strategy includes followers, engagement, and our plan every month for what we are going to post. Then we have two blogs per week that I either write myself or ask a sister to write, um, which I gained from a former CWR conversation. And then I have a strategy and goals for traditional media, like television, radio, newspapers. And then we have a plan for our direct communications, all of our fundraising appeals, all of our monthly newsletters, all of our email blasts every month. And then we have plans for all of our events, like a, a annual gala, be it virtual or in person, um, or other fundraising events, re, uh, reunions for former students and the like. So now I'm going to show you a few of the tools that I use. Let me share my screen. Just give me one moment. So I start all the time when I look at my communications strategy. So in my strategy, I have my goals, my plans, my messages for the year, my audience, and then my press and advertising plan. And I'm not going to read everything to you and we'll make all of these available um, after this presentation. Uh, but our goals for this year is to bring back lapsed donors, engage more with the people who are already supporting us, either by volunteering, praying, or financially, and gain more media attention, and then increase our partnerships. We work with so many great partners in all of our nonprofits that there can be more collaboration between us. Then I jot out all the mailings that I'm going to do for the year. And we don't need to go through them, but there's about one every two months, depending on um, the nonprofit we're working with. And then I use my audience analysis. So we decide who we want to target and how to micro, micro, micro target those people. So sisters, alumni, I won't go through it all, children of alums, ongoing donors, legacy donors, and et cetera. And then we make goals for our social media growth. And you can track that on, on Facebook, Instagram, um, or any online tool you use. You can track that um, without having to write it all down into a spreadsheet. Um, and then we use our press plan. I'll show you that in a moment. And then our advertising plan. We have a very limited advertising budget. So I decide what four times per year we're going to advertise. So it would be Christmas, time, the time of our annual gala, um, and then our fall appeal and at Jubilee time. So I, I use social media. Then for the Jubilees, I will use radio. For Christmas and for our annual gala, we'll do a mix between radio and online. I won't even go through any of that. Let me show you my next little tool. This is a blank version of our social media calendar. I use it, if you can see the tabs at the bottom, I have a tab for every month of the year. I'm showing you April so you can see what it looks like when it's blank, but we put in our ecumenical calendar, any fundraising days ahead of time, and any ideas from last year that we're going to bring over to this year. So before I even have to fill out the social media for the month, I have a very clear roadmap of what we're going to be writing. Here is, and then on the right-hand side, I have ideas for blogs coming up.
for international men with each other. And then any ideas for uh, uh, press newspaper out in one sheet ahead of time. Here is my American holiday is coming up. Players um, highlighting sponsors for our press or for our gala, African American History Month, uh, and so on and so forth. So I have found that it makes it a lot easier to get approval because I have to have three people approve um, all my social media. That it's easier to do it this way. Um, and, in, and in terms of writing social media, um, many of our sisters are retired. So I ask uh, about three retired sisters to be on my copywriting team. So I will put um, all of these printed documents into their mailboxes and ask them to help me with copy editing before I send it to leadership. Let me stop my share, find my next document. Do, do, do. Okay. Um, in terms of advertising this year, and we have found great success with putting a little bit of advertising money in and getting a lot out. In Nebraska, we have just lost our uh, printed Catholic newspaper. It just stopped printing after 80 years in November. So we pivoted and have great success with using those ads in church bulletins. So instead of advertising in the Catholic newspaper, we pinpoint specific churches that will put those ads in the back of their bulletins. We also advertise on Facebook every month um, to get more. Uh, we have a, a Catholic profile where we ask people to pray with us. And then we've had great success the last two years with digital display ads. You can Google digital display if you don't know what it is, but it essentially means if you go to a store to buy Nike shoes and then you go home, you'll see that you're getting served a lot of ads from Adidas shoes because they know where you were with your phone. So if you live in the zip code, if you live in the area that we want to target, we are able to serve you ads on your phone to join us in prayer. And that has turned out to be really successful in our Christmas appeals every year. Now we continue to have our goals year in and year out. Our first is to um, expand our communications regionally and nationally. So if anybody has um, press to add to my press list, that isn't just local, I'd be very keen on, on uh, seeing it. And then we're trying to get more on television. One of our biggest, uh, one of our biggest hurdles to overcome in our communications department is to convince the sisters to allow us to advertise. So they're such a beautiful, humble group of women that they don't want to use their dollars in advertisement. So we're slowly building up our communications department year over year, first from radio, then to print, then to digital. And our goal for next year is to allow them to, to let us put in a few television ads because they work. We add people to our prayer list and we add people to our donor list with all the ads that we try. So, um, those are some goals for next year. I've got plenty of these documents and plans and calendars that I can share with you and even throw into Google Translate for you. Um, but if you want anything from me, feel free to email me and ask me for a specific plan. If you want a social media plan or our gala plan, um, we can do that. I can send that to you. Uh, the last thing I wanted to discuss is. Let me share my screen again. Is Microsoft Teams. 
Now, most of our staff since COVID has been remote. We do about a 50-50 in the office and working from home. Uh, and we were really navigating that for quite some time to figure out how to stay in community with each other while we're working remotely. So we found that Microsoft Teams is really helpful. Some people use Google, some people use Asana. There are lots of different programs, but we found it really helpful uh, in Teams because we can work on the same program at the same time. And also we can call each other, you know, Zoom, you have to set up a link ahead of time, but on Teams, we can just call each other and have a video. We, so we video each other four or five times a day, even though we're working separate from each other. We can speak to leadership this way, we can speak to each other this way, and then we can all collaborate on the same document. It was a really tricky first year with Teams when we were figuring out how to build it, but we've worked into having a general team, a fundraising team, an events team, a communications team, a ministry team, and then the team for our largest nonprofit. So even if there's only two to five people on each team, we can communicate with each other via phone, via chat, or just deciding to work in the same document together at the same time. We aren't planning on coming back to the office full time indefinitely until COVID has passed. It's turned out to be really useful for our team, especially um, all of the working moms who work with us uh, so that they are able to be there for their kids more and still stay in constant contact with us uh, lay people on the team and with the sisters and especially with leadership. So those are some of the tools that I use as a one person communicator working for the sisters and then their three main nonprofits. And I'm happy to share any documents with you and I'm happy for you to share anything with me. We kind of built this ourselves. So anything you have would be really useful for us to learn. Thank you and I'll turn it back over to Rob. Actually, Molly, I just wanna step in first and say thank you so much there there's such a nice variety of ideas and tools that you presented. Uh, we're gonna take just a, a few moments now for attendees to jot down questions you might have for Molly, questions and comments, and we can bring those into the conversation in just a little bit. So we'll take just a few seconds here for this. And now I would invite Rob to, uh, to take the stage here. Okay, well, good morning, everyone from California. Hope you are doing well today and staying safe from COVID. And uh, really, I, I wanna have a, a little bit of an introduction. My, first of all, for myself, I'm Robert Cogswell. I'm the Director of Communications for the Sisters of St. Joseph of Orange, California. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself, but first I really want to take a moment to thank all the leaders who are on this uh, broadcast because communications does not happen without you and the doors that you can open for us. So you uh, kind of control the keys to the things that we need to help uh, accomplish our, our mission and ministry. So thank you. And uh, a few other disclaimers that I, I also want to acknowledge all the colleagues, all the other communicators out there whose expertise I, I respect and admire and draw upon regularly. And also another disclaimer that uh, we have many similarities in what we do, uh, yet we are all unique congregational cultures and experiences. There may not be one size that fits all, but we do a lot of similar things and hopefully you can take from this presentation and adapt it to what you do in your location. So a little bit about myself. Um, I've been connected with uh, this congregation, the Sisters of St. Joseph of Orange since about 1991. Uh, they were an account of mine when I worked at a commercial printing company. And in time, after a few years, I, I came to work for them. I came to work for one of their ministries and did that for a number of years. Uh, I interacted with uh, a few different communications directors that the sisters had uh, in my job. 
And uh, over time, uh, people had moved on to other opportunities and we were without a communications director. And uh, there was a moment where our congregation was thinking of uh, taking that job and really breaking it up and kind of giving different pieces of responsibilities to different people around uh, the administrative offices. Uh, I stepped up at that point and advocated, you don't really wanna do that. You really should preserve a, a communications office. And, and with that, we were able to work out an arrangement where I stayed working at the ministry and also did the communications function about one day a week. So it was a part-time job. And basically I was helping uh, have our Christmas cards done and our magazine published a few times a year. And that was about it. So that, that was around 2004, which if, if you know your history, that's about when social media is starting to really get going. And uh, we didn't really have a website just yet. So uh, I was able to get connected in that time with CWR and, and share with our congregation, hey, this is what's happening all over the country here and, and really a, around the world with people doing communications. And you know, leadership fortunately recognized, oh yes, this is a, a much bigger task. And I became a full-time communications director around 2007. Uh, in time, uh, we added a coordinator as we approached our 100th Jubilee for our congregation. So now we're a department of two people. So a, a director and a coordinator. And uh, a few years later, by the time we get to about 2016, we added a third person who was a specialist and their job was to produce video. And that's really how uh, we've grown our communications function over time. So what I wanna to do today is really cover what's been helpful and challenging uh, in building a communications department and kind of provide a broad roadmap. But ultimately you need to decide about what resources you can allocate to, to meet your needs. So bear with me for a moment as I prepare to share my screen. All right, and we'll get this fired up here. All right. So building a communications office, uh, Molly, I really appreciate all the detail that you shared. I'm not gonna get into sharing communications plans or strategic plans, but really kind of start with a communications mission. And this is something that we use for our department. This is a departmental mission and we use it to kind of guide us what, with what we do. And our mission statement for our department is that communications provides the means, the media mix to share info, which is our content to connect people, our audiences to advance the mission of the congregation. So you need to decide what that, what that mission is. It may be your actual mission or your charism, but it also might be, hey, we're really designed to bring in revenue to support the congregation. So there might be some nuance there. And elements of the communications mission each element is scalable. So that means that you can expand or contract each of those elements based on the capacity that you have to accomplish those tasks. So I'll kind of go in reverse order of that mission. So uh, when you're talking about each of those elements, connecting people, audiences, you need to decide who is it that you're communicating with. It may be all internal communication. So you're working with your own sisters or employees. And of course, external would be donors, church officials, the people that you're serving, your family and friends, and of course your civic community as well. And audiences may vary between media. So there's no you know, one stop shop for all of your audience. So you might have audience that is following you on Facebook, and then you have audience that has maybe provided you email addresses that you're sending email marketing to. Some of those people may be in both groups, but they also might be uh, unique to each media. The types of content that you're sharing information, again, you're, you're deciding how much resources you can put into each of these areas. 
So obviously written social media posts and press releases, appeal letters and feature stories, and really going along with that, you're developing photography, video production can take time or it may not need to take a lot of time. We'll get into that in a moment. Graphic design, podcasts are other examples of the content that you're sharing. Those can be, you can have a person devoted just for social media, or it could be just part of one person's job. So you need to scale that as you need to. Other ideas to think about with messaging and content is what do you want your audiences to know or to do? That's going to influence what resources you're, uh, excuse me, what resources you're putting in to your content. And then what relationship do you want to have with your audience? Deciding those things in advance will help you with your communications plan. And then of course, when you get to your media mix, these are all the tools that you have at your disposal to share messages with your audiences. So websites, you may have more than one, you might be not just taking care of your own website for your congregation, but maybe several for different ministries that you have. Social media channels, depending on the number of resources that you have, uh, if it's a one person office, maybe you know, they're doing a couple of uh, platforms like Facebook or, or Twitter. Uh, I like what Molly shared with her calendar that helps plan things ahead, makes you a little more productive in that department. You might have more media channels that you're using and posting in almost every day or multiple times a day. And that might require a specialist to do that. You've got your publications, your email marketing, which is often very successful because it's pushing out to people rather than having to pull them in. Uh, podcasts, paid advertising. I view connection events, you know, any kind of a special event as part of your communications media mix because you are connecting with people there. And then of course, there's lots of other options that are available to you as well. So I wanna take a little quick look at some organizational chart examples for scalability about building a communications office. You know, one of the models is sometimes your leadership is also your communications officer. I, I don't envy that. That's a big job to take on. Uh, a one-person department might look like uh, option two there. So your leadership and your communications manager are, are coordinating things. As you start to build out your department, you've got your leadership interacting with your communications director, and then maybe a coordinator and a specialist who is assisting as well. And then really a full-size department would look like leadership. Some places will put a mission advancement director between leadership and communications. Uh, oftentimes that mission advancement person is overseeing uh, the communications director and then a fundraising director. And then of course, you've got your comm coordinators and specialists as well. So those are four different uh, models of scaled uh, departments. I would advocate to get the help that you need. Uh, communication specialists are often in one of these areas, social media. Uh, you could use a website administrator, especially if you've got multiple sites to manage. Uh, video production is often where you'll find a specialist because it can often be time consuming and requires some real specific expertise. Uh, photography, that's Hopefully you can draw on a lot of people to support you with photography. A lot of your uh, community members might be able to help you with that. Uh, graphic designers, and of course, you might have a lot of writers in your community as well. Uh, each of these roles could also be uh, done by a contracted vendor, though those could be expensive and uh, maybe less reliable than one of your own employees. There are lots of online tools also that can help you if you need to scale what you're doing. So for example, if you're not able to have a video production specialist on your team, uh, there are simple ways to produce video. There's lots of apps that do that, including Animoto. I just saw something with uh, iStock Photos actually trying to get a video uh, the content builder on their site. I haven't tried it yet, but I'd like to. 
Uh, and then of course, email marketing, uh, lots of people are familiar with things like constant contact, uh, graphic design tools like Canva are available and uh, community chat apps. You know, we've just started using Discord recently in the past year uh, with CWR. Uh, ask questions, get advice from people who know what they're doing. So I can't, uh, express enough the value of connecting with a peer organization like CWR. So I, I'd highly recommend getting in contact with others who are doing the same thing in different places. They can really be a huge help to get questions answered uh, or just give advice or just learn new tools that are out there. Some of the key challenges, support from leadership is essential. Uh, there's lots of hidden parts of the job. So we talk about all these plans uh, that we want to uh, enact, but there's lots of things that happen behind the scenes that can be obstacles for the position. So I'd say you have to expect the unexpected and plan for time for that because it's going to happen. You can't always see what's coming. You get random inquiries almost every day, whether it's someone from the public who's asking you a question or maybe trying to track down a sister or maybe a sister is calling you to ask you the password. And then of course you've got crisis communications that you can't foresee coming, but hopefully we can prepare for it. Uh, creative work is not linear. And what I mean by that is, hey, it's 10 a.m. I need to have a great idea right now. It, it doesn't necessarily work that way. It might be like you're falling asleep at night and then the idea hits you. So it doesn't necessarily fit a perfect schedule to do creative work. Uh, great skills are a magnet uh, for other people to ask for your help. Uh, so sometimes you'll get a lot of interruptions of people, hey, create my flyer, or, and you may not have time to do that. Uh, you may be spread too thin. That, that happens at times uh, that you might be serving many ministries or departments, and, um, And there's other typical work that you might be doing too, like just paying bills for the department or doing evaluations, uh, celebrating department birthdays, things like that. Those all take time. And of course, lack of resources, skill and talent can slow you down. Uh, I think formation is an essential uh, thing that you need to do for your department. The people that are communicating for your mission need to know your history. They need to know all about your charism. They need to know your sisters. So formation is essential, especially if you're bringing someone in and have just hired someone who's had a career in perhaps a, a, a private sector communications office, they need to know what you're about. So formation is essential. And then I think a lot of times because communicators are often very busy, performance metrics can get lost. That's all the evaluation and measurements, any kind of analysis and benchmarks that you're trying to, to measure to help you do your job. Uh, what works well? Again, support from leadership. Of course, if, if leadership is with you, then that helps everything work really well. Having a plan, as Molly showed a lot of her examples, uh, having that plan can really uh, help you get through your, through your day and, and accomplish your goals. Uh, something that we've done uh, is enacted something called strategic priorities. It's really just three simple sort of touchstones that you want to help guide you. Uh, what we've said is our communications work, you should be able to meet each of these metrics. You should be able to connect easily. You always want to engage creatively and you want to nurture relationships. So if what we're doing is not doing those things, then we need to rethink what we're doing structures and systems, of course, uh, creating a content calendar is, is one of those examples. Uh, setting boundaries is important. Uh, you know, sometimes we can be getting calls uh, through weekends or late evenings, that's part of our role, uh, but you know, there does need to be some boundaries uh, to help nurture you in the department. And then of course, a network of support like CWR is really important to, to help you do what you do. So thank you for that. I, I want to just pop my email address on there. If any questions pop up, uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. Uh, this is 
a broad subject to do in 15 minutes. So if uh, uh, any other questions pop, we can maybe answer it later on in this, in this uh, webinar, but also you're welcome to reach out to me anytime. So thank you very much. Uh, and Rob, thank you. That was uh, a wonderful uh, sharing of the insights about structures of communications and some things to anticipate and some resources to have. Uh, so thanks, thanks again for that. And we're gonna take just uh, a few seconds again to pause. And I encourage you to write down any questions you may have, uh, comments about what Rob has said. And, and we will bring those into the conversation in, the, in a little bit. And now I'd like to welcome our final speaker, Sister Hema, welcome. And, and I'm gonna ask you, Sister Hema, to be sure and unmute yourself. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm going to share the screen. May I share the screen? I need to share the screen, please. I think you have it. Can you? Okay. So first of all, thank you for the contributions of Molly and Rob that are different from my personal experience in my congregation. I am Gemma Meronio, and I am a Theresian sister of the Society of Santa Teresa of Jesus, founded by Santa Rica de Osto. Our congregation is present in 22 countries in America, Africa, and Europe where we live with our tradition, educational charism. What I'm going to share is the process of creating the general communication team in our congregation. I am aware that there are many congregations with a long story and teams, but I believe that our experience would help other congregations that are beginning or in and trying to see how to do it. I'm going to speak from the general level of our society, but I believe that much of what we are going to share can be applied to provincial teams to express our experience of communication in the society and our team. I'm going to take the image of a small sprout we can say that we are in the process of being born because we have only been here for a year and a half. But at the same time, we recognize the beauty and freshness of what is new. With simplicity, I can say that we are satisfied with the path that we are, what we are doing for the moment. The points I'm going to follow are our foundations or roots what help us or feed us, how we grow our way of being and organizing the communication team, our outbreak, communication channels, challenges, and good practices. This webinar is called Building a Communication Office. And to do that, we know that foundations are important. That's why I'm going to stay on that. If we talk 
about buildings, we talk about foundations. But when talking about plants, we talk about roots. And I prefer roots because the image of the plant connects better with our little sprout. What are the foundations or roots on which we are building communication in the society? First, the decision of the general government to assume and promote communication as a priority within the society. Betting on communication means dedicating people, time, resources, as well as being willing to make it a new variable to contemplate in the process of the congregation. Another route is to create our own communication culture that responds to our situation, charism, and needs. In March 2020, we held a one-month international course for sisters, lay traditions, and lay women and men. It was important that the general government not only organized it, but also attended it. We were accompanied by experts who help us in different topics and communications. And there were also religious men and women from other congregations. It was a very good experience. Another route is the elaboration of our communication plan that is a fruit of the reflection of the government, the accompaniment of experts, and the course that we had just done. And the last route was the constitution of the communication team in July 2020. But all routes need a nourishment to gain strength and growth. And I will talk about three. First, to recognize communication as a mission in our society, not just another activity to be promoted. Today, it is a necessity because everything and everyone communicates. But depending on the meaning we give it, it will have one purpose or another one, and we will invest some resources or others. When we recognize communication as mission, we assume that is a privileged means to announce the gospel, to make known and spread our charism. Another nourishment is to learn from experiences, congregations, professionals. In my case, in addition to the course that I have mentioned and other courses, besides my own formation in pedagogy, as I belong to the communication reflection group in the Confer Spain has been vital because there we share good practices, we reflect, we dialogue about communication. We cannot do it alone. In fact, we do not want to do it alone. And we want to learn from others as um, the other speakers said, this nourishes and feeds us. When we share our experience with other congregations, that is a means that enriches and confirms our objective and our way of proceeding and our approach. But how do we grow? Here, I'm going to talk about the organization of the communication team. The team we have now, uh, we have a plan of communication. In our case, we decided to start with a small team. We want that life, the needs and projects be the ones that set the configuration and the pace that we will follow. With regard to people, now we have three people that uh, made up the team. Myself, Gemma Meronio, Carlos Velasco, who is a lay person working at full time, and Angel Cuadra, who is a counselor, a sister 
from the general team. And why? Because we think that the communication is at the service of the life and mission of the society. And we like to say that we are like a hand of the government seeking to build bridges to offer meaning and also to receive and welcome initiatives. If we have a sister from the general government, it makes it easier. And why we have a sister responsible for the team? Because in this first moment, we think that it is important that the Theresian identity is reflected in what we communicate and design. It could be that in the future, we have a lay responsible. And why we have also a lay person? Because he has the, the necessary professional training and he lives in Madrid, Spain. Which are the criteria that we follow? First, complementarity. When I was named as the responsible for the team, we thought that uh, we needed somebody who was a complement to me. It, for example, the knowledge of the iteration identity, the world of communication and the necessary tools in social networks, etc. Another issue was the teleworking. We, when we began, we, before the pandemic, we decided to, to work uh, in teleworking. We didn't think at having somebody here in Rome because we wanted to explore new ways and structures to make it easier to find people who respond to the profile we needed. And also because we, we wanted to have new ways of organization and work. How do we work and organize ourselves? We understand the way we work within the frame that helps us in all the senses. That framework, we, we try to see which is the meaning we give to the communication, which are the messages we want to share, which will be the channels, the audiences, Without the communication plan, our work as a team would have been completely different and more difficult. Our organization is based on communication strategies, uh, calendar. Also, there are some dates that are to be, to be taken into account in the society and the church. We have also a content plan for social networks, websites, newsletters. There are also team meetings and gatherings. In addition to the daily meetings we have with Carlos, the two sisters we meet weekly and the three of us, we meet once a fortnight. It is also important, the statistics and positioning analysis. Uh, monitoring, evaluating, and providing feedback on the impact of social media and web communication strategies that help us to assess and redirect our strategies. Uh, development of handbooks on the reality, based on the reality of the company, we have some hand handbooks, digital media, corporate image handbooks, etc. Training or formation, that is the part of the team dynamics. We try to give time to the necessary topics to be able to communicate. For example, duration identity, global educational compact, fraternity tutti, synodality, etc. The outbreaks that we can share, what are the communication channels that we used in the team, the company's website, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc., that are working since October. What 
do we share as a good practice from the our little experience? We want to share three. First, the support and communication with the general government. This does not mean that everything has been achieved or that we don't have much room for improvement, but it helps us on one hand and make us responsible on the other. Also, it is necessary to give time to create a team. It is not enough that people are appointed. And also, in order to advance in communication, it is necessary to give a lot of time to think, reflect, to dialogue, etc. Because the temptation, it is always to publish in order to get likes. But what is important is to know from where and why and what for, which are our challenges to continue creating a culture of terrorism communication, to make our mission and the church visible, to continue taking steps as a team, both in the organization formation and developing the objectives, to give a systematic accompaniment to the provincial communication teams, to establish a network of communicators and collaborators with people in the different countries where we are, and also to evaluate in order to discover areas of improvement that will guide us when we have to incorporate other people to our team. A challenge that we have is that we will have our general chapter in 2023, and we would like to establish a good communication strategy to support to support us before, during, and after the chapter. And finally, something I would like. The objective of our team does not end with ourselves, but it's the, what Jesus called us to do, go and proclaim the good news. That is what all the congregations do through our charism. And I, will, I would like that what we do in communication, the good news of Jesus sounds strongly in our communication and to be hope, denunciation, meaning, hands that are opened. And I will finish with the sentence of St. Teresa, who says, who give voices to cry out, to, sp to speak of God's love and identity. Hopefully, we will find the way to shout and give voices in the key of the good news. This is the desire of our team that I have shared with you. Thank you very much. And, and thank you so much, sister for your comments about how to grow a communications office, the roots that are needed, how to nourish it, uh, the team aspect, so many wonderful ideas that you've shared. Uh, we'll move into Q&A in just a moment, but I encourage you again to jot down any questions and ideas you have for our wonderful panelists today, I'm sure, we won't be able to get through them all, but uh, take a moment and jot them down. And then uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to Patricia to bring us back in and uh, enter the Q&A and conversation. Thank you, Maxine. Thank you to Molly, Robert, and Gemma for sharing their experience. I just want to invite the three speakers to go through the chat because at the really beginning, there is some questions for Molly about advertising and for Robert about 
the organization of the uh, office and the relationship with the leaders. And there are also a lot of comments for Gemma. And I would like you to choose one or two questions to just comment in a few minutes. But before going to that, I, want to, I just want to highlight the richness of this meeting because we heard so different experiences of, be, of being and organizing an, a, a communication office, office. There is not just one way to do that. It seems really that each congregation can give birth to their own, its own communication office with, with a sort of specific spirituality, a specific culture. So I think this is really the richness of the communication within religious life, which is very different from a company who have perhaps, who has perhaps less options and less creativity that we can use. So before give the floor again to Molly, Robert and Gemma to answer briefly or comment, I would like to ask to each of you, because you also listen to each other as speakers. So I would like Molly first and then Robert and Gemma just to share one pro, one advantage of, this, of the communication office system and organization of the others. I don't know if my wonderful English is clear, but I want just to focus on the other's experience and just to highlight one or two elements that you find really a good element from where we can learn. So I'm just now will call you all. I'm looking for Molly, just a second here, Molly. So we can start with Molly, then we go through Robert and then with Gemma. So I will call you all here. Molly, you have the floor. Okay, I think I understand your question correctly. And um, what has been most helpful for me, I don't know if you can tell by my personality or my office, but I am a creative brain person and I am not naturally organized on my own. So creating all of these pathways for me to constantly be able to understand what's coming next and what my next step is and what I need to do today to keep things moving is really, really helpful. So I may have too many plans that I share with everybody so we can all be on the same page, but having everything written down ahead of time is helpful for somebody who's naturally chaotic. Thank you, Molly. Molly I feel very like you are. So Robert. Robert is my decanter personality. Robert. <laughs> well, for, for myself, I really appreciate seeing Molly and Sister Hema's uh, organization. Uh, I think structure is so important because without it, we really just have chaos. There's so many things coming our way every day. Uh, you know, hundreds of emails every day. It's, it's crazy. Uh, but having that structure and that plan is essential to survival, really. Uh, and I appreciated seeing how you do it. Uh, particularly, Sister Gemma, I really appreciated the, the spirituality of communications that was evident in your work. Thank you. Thank you, Can Robert. I say one thing to Robert about the hundreds of emails per day. I've made it very clear that you won't get an email from me within five minutes or two or three hours. That if I'm working on something, I'm not bouncing back and forth. So I've made it pretty clear to my team and to leadership that I think it's responsible and okay to turn off my email for two hours mm -hmm. while I'm working on something and then turn it back on later or when I'm at home watching reality TV at night, respond to things then because um, I don't think it's productive to be multitasking all the time. And so I, I think that some people think you should always be available and email right away. I'm of the opinion that you can turn off your email for a few hours and just focus on the task at hand. Right. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Robert. And I just want to highlight and be underlined because this is something that I usually and daily experience, the fact that to organize your daily work, you need a methodology, a method. And this is a very concrete example, Molly, to also to organize, to have 
different se session in the morning or in the day. You cannot be online always because it's really the focus in your attention. Thank you, Gemma, para ti. Muy bien. Pues a mí de la presentación de... From the, the other two presentations, was very good they, they presented their plans and that is very important uh, and I, I was uh, uh, surprised because Molly said that she needs to have the approval that is important and also what Robert said that we have to know what do we need before trying to obtain so in order to get the help we need, either the resources in people or others, and also what he said about working with peers from other congregations or other groups in order to get support, enrichment, and sometimes we don't know how to do, and it's easier if we get the support we need and it gives us light, especially if it's from professional people. Thank you, Gemma. And we can understand that the different departments are different. Can you hear me, uh, Gemma? No, yeah, it's because she's speaking Spanish now, so. She's trying to check if Gemma, when we hear Molly and Robert coming from a similar culture, we have similar similarities. They have talked about fundraising and also marketing. That's more a cultural element and maybe if Molly and Robert can explain a bit more about, about that. And also, Robert, uh, if you can uh, explain a bit more about that, and I will also answer to some questions that we have in the chat so that uh, mm, you can she will pick up some questions that are written in Spanish in the chat now. She will read them now. Could you please share an element in order to promote the spirituality of the founder, for example? Another question in Spanish, something that you can share about the different dynamics among the provincial teams of communication. That's more for Gemma. Another question in English now. When you begin to propose these at the general provincial level, what points do you find more helpful to begin with? What did you find helpful introducing this, this to the sisters who may have less experience with these topics? Again, the cultural communication. Bueno, yo, uh, perdón, mezclo con los idiomas. I'm, I, I think we can just give you, uh, let's say two minutes for each just to comment and then I just, do, I just want to um, say to the participants that we are going to, re to recuperate all the questions and using also for the following webinars or find a way to answer different. Okay, so thank you. Uh, Molly, you have the flow. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I completely understood the question. So let me let Brian go first. Or Robert, sorry. Yeah. No problem. Uh, well, I, I think one of the questions out there was understanding about uh, a culture of fundraising or mission advancement in the United States. And I think a lot of congregations, uh, that is one of the key functions 
uh, that happen through a communications office is connecting with uh, family, friends, people that you know that support the mission, whether it's through time, talent, or treasure. Uh, people are, are with you and working with you, and they may also be contributing financially. And uh, communications is an essential role in that process. And that's where that comes in. Uh, maybe uh, the fundraising isn't happening as much in, in different countries, I'm not sure. But in the United States, that, that is something that happens. Um, I did want to address one question in the chat that Amanda Hackett asked me. Uh, was it a challenge to convince leadership to support adding additional roles of a coordinator and a specialist? And uh, initially, I, I think uh, the, the challenge was expanding from a part-time to a full-time department. That was something that I spent quite a bit of time advocating to do. And uh, really a big help uh, with that was CWR, the peer organization in, in CNWR at the time. And just being able to recognize what was happening around the country. And again, at the same time, things were exploding with websites and social media. It was really clear that that was a direction that we needed to move to, but I, I still built a case for doing it. And CWR was essential in helping that happen. Uh, really, uh, leadership has been an, an incredible. I mean, they, they've been fantastic with everything that, that I've raised that, hey, I, this is something that I'm seeing. I think we should move a certain direction and here's why. And they've recognized that and said, yes, we need to do that and I've offered support. And, you know, I don't take that lightly because adding a staff you know, adding personnel might be taking away from adding personnel in another place or being able to do something else in ministry. So it's, it's an important decision to make. And I appreciate uh, the partnership and collaboration with leadership. It's essential to be able to accomplish communications ministry. So when we talk about advancement culture um, and reaching new people, it is most important to have the sisters be our advancement cheerleaders. People don't need to hear from me or have a letter from me. They want to know what the sisters are doing in the community and they want to hear it from those sisters. So a lot of the work we do in advancement is internal communications with our sisters. So we'll do a video presentation every month or when we could get together, we would do it in person, constantly reinforcing how important our advancement work is for their retirement and for their ministries and everything in between. And to get them to get comfortable with tooting their own horn. So we are constantly asking our sisters to explain to the people that they work with when they're writing cards and letters, when they're on their Facebook, to, to share the messages and share the stories. So once a month, we will do an advancement video like this on Zoom that we will record and send to the sisters about our updates on our goals and what we're looking for for the next month or two so that they can be involved every step of the way. And then we'll try to do some video on Facebook or on YouTube with the sisters talking about their accomplishments and what they've been able to do in their ministries, especially during COVID. Um, I wanted to answer one more question in the chat was about the spirituality of your founders, which is really exciting for me because we just had the 400th anniversary of the death of our foundress. Um, and we had some great uh, ways of sharing her spirituality. Um, we kind of have three founders uh, from different points in time. So, and we've got plenty of documentation, too much for somebody to read on their own. Um, so sometimes we will share social media posts about their visions or their prayers or just snippets of their history and then calls to prayer from that. Um, and then I'd say every two months we have the opportunity to share something historical uh, about these founders 
and then invite people to pray with us uh, about uh, whatever the historical topic might be. Um, so it's a great mix of current social justice, of ministry updates, of history about the sisters, and then the, the spirituality of the founders. All can go into blog form, which is like a longer reflection on your website. And then you can turn that into social media posts for the month, always leading back to the longer pieces, uh, which has been really helpful for us. And even our alumni who went to school here um, are constantly telling us that they're learning new things about where the sisters came from. So it's been proving pretty fruitful for us. Thank you, Molly. Gemma, it's up to you. Just unmute yourself. You have two minutes. Sí. Perdón porque hubo un tiempo que... Sorry, because there was a moment when I couldn't hear Patricia, but I could see the questions on the chat. I will try to answer. With regard to the key of seeing communication as a mission, I think the key is to discover that behind that there are people. And that is essential to me. And that we can meet people in two, or we, we must know that behind every communication there are people and that our message is the gospel message. And with that, we can see that the communication, we can see communication as mission, not only people from outside the congregation, even the sisters in the congregation, we can have a communication by mail, but there are different ways of doing that. And the secret is to discover always that there are people that is what Jesus did, meeting people. There is another question saying, how do we do in order to um, share this with the sisters who are not, who doesn't, don't know very well what happens in communication. But today we all share this word of communication. We all have WhatsApp, we all are sending messages. So sometimes they are not so far away and in some way we each one is a small communications office and the sisters should assume that we must share the message in the mission and that the communications office is just a part a section and we must help the sisters to communicate because we are all communicating communicating and for the elder sisters i think that it can help i think we we have elder sisters and what helps is to show them what we are publishing what is happening in our ministries so that they can pray for that and when they feel that what we are publishing are not only pictures, but that is life, so that they can pray and see that is the fruit of what they have done during all their life. At that moment, they realize that that is their mission too. So that is important. It is important to know why and why we are doing that that can help a lot. And again, we will take care of the questions and comments in the chat. So for the future um, webinars, I just want to, before giving the floor to Sister Maxine to close this meeting, I just would like to ask your prayers because the USG is going to launch the new logo and the new website next week, January 26th. And you can imagine the complexity of our reality. So we'll really ask your accompanying and your prayer because everything won't be perfect, but I hope that it will be at your service. 
And the other thing was about a comment in the chat asking that um, among us, there are already a lot of resources to share. USG is aiming to organize between 2022 and 2023 continental meetings of uh, communicators throughout the world. So we can work together, we can learn each other, and we can also train each other. So it's just an announcing really brand new because nobody knows it. So it's a gift for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Maxine. Thank you, Patricia. And I want to thank all of you, our attendees here today, and a special thanks to our panelists, Molly, Rob, and Sister Hema. Uh, thanks to our translators for the wonderful job that you do, and everyone behind the scenes who made this webinar possible. Uh, a recording, as you know, will be available afterwards, as will documents from from the webinar today. And a quick reminder, you're going to want to mark your calendar upcoming events, upcoming webinars from CWR and UISG, April 20th, strategic planning, July 20th, social media, and October 19th, crisis communications. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you in April. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Ress, for helping us. Thank Have a nice so day. Much. Bye, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You're welcome. We were very good, a good group. Wonderful. 220 people. 220 personas. De muchos países. Gracias, Gemma. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Molly. Have a nice day for the United States. Thank you. You too. Good luck on the web launch.